Hey guys, welcome back to our VCP 6R5 ICM hands-on training. Uh, this is the lab 7. In this lab, we will go ahead and start working with the VMware's uh, standards, which a lot of people just simply by refers them as like vSwitches also. We'll go ahead and explore uh, the, some of the things about the vSwitch. We'll go ahead and try to create a new vSwitch, a new port group. So this is the high-level agenda they'll walk through in this lab. We'll go ahead and view and explore the standard vSwitch or the switch configuration. We'll go ahead and create a new uh, standard switch. Then we'll go ahead and see how we can go ahead and create a new virtual machine port group and then we will go ahead and pick some of the VMs that we had created in the previous labs and we'll go ahead and move those VMs from the existing standard switch to this newly created VM port group onto our new standard switch that we have created. So let's go ahead and jump into the lab and doing the hands-on I will walk you through a few other important concepts uh, that you need to remember when you are working with the networking uh, no matter if it's a standard switch or a distributor switch that we will explore later. Some of the things will remain uh, very common to both. So let's go ahead and log in to our vSphere web client. We are on, within our vSphere web client. Uh, we are on the home page. So let's go ahead and simply click on host and clusters option. And on the host and cluster, uh, if you recall, we had added three ESXi hosts into this environment. So let's go ahead and click on uh, one of the hosts and go ahead and explore the standard switch configuration on this host. So we'll go ahead and click on the host 43. On the host 43, there is there are a couple of tabs and one of the tab being configure so you can click on the configure tab or you can do the same thing from the actions and within the actions uh, there are different things that can be done so let's go ahead and uh, go to the configure right now within the configure there are a couple of options so we are under the networking subsection within the networking there are a couple options uh, one says virtual switches vm kernel adapters physical adapter tcp ip configuration in advance i'm just right now clicking on the physical adapters just to see how many physical NICs or how many physical uplinks i have available on this host so as you can see on this host there are four physical vnix or we call them simply the uplink that means this host is connected to an outside switch and on this esxi host there are four nick ports available and right now you can see there are three ports which are connected my vm nick one is down which i have not physically connected but i have connected my vm nick zero vm nick two and vm nick three right now you can see the vm nick zero is being used by one of my switch and the name of that switch is a v switch zero so now and v nick two and v nick three has not been assigned to any of the switch so now let's go ahead and come back to the virtual switch so on the under virtual switch you would see there is one switch by default that gets created during the esxi install that's called vswitch0 so simply go ahead and click on vswitch0 so as you can see the vswitch0 that's the name of the vswitch0 it's called the management network also right now and it's a type of the standard switch so within this vswitch0 we there are two port group we have a port group by name management network and we have another port group by name vm network you can click on this i to get some more information about this particular particular port group the network label for this one is management network are there any vlan and some of the other properties that you can go ahead and take a look if there are any policies and some of the other things can be explored here on the left hand side these are the two port groups on the right hand side it should uh, the middle this gray box is kind of a indication this is a, our v switch and on the v switch on the left hand side these are the vms which are connected to the v switch and on the right hand side this vm nick zero is our outside connectivity which is your physical uplink for the traffic to go outside of this ESX high host it can make use of this particular VNIC 0. If you need to get more detail about this VNIC 0 again you can go ahead and click on this I that would give you some more details about this okay right now it's connected what kind of link speed and duplex on this one and some of the other information can be explore, explored from here. If there is a CDP enabled you can get to see some CDP information if there is some LLDP information uh, if that's enabled you can go ahead and explore the LLDP part from here. Now within this UV switch as you can see if you go ahead and expand the there is a VM kernel port and that's the VM kernel K0. The IP address is 43, which is our management IP address of our ESXi host. We have another port group by name VM network. So if you go ahead and expand the VM network, it shows there are six virtual machines. So let's go ahead and explore, expand them. And you can see these are the virtual machine being currently connected to the VSU0 onto the VM network port. Uh, there are a few other thing properties that you can go ahead and explore. So right now on VM switch zero, you can go ahead and click on this pencil icon, which is the added setting. So within the added setting, there are quite a bit of configuration the MTU right now the MTU for this we switch is configured to be 1500 if you are working with the jumbo frame let's say 9000 or something you can go ahead and change that over if you're working with any kind of a security uh, you can go ahead and change some of the security setting from this page traffic shipping if you need to enable any kind of a QoS or traffic shipping you can go ahead and change some of the thing teaming and failover uh, these are the different type of teaming and failover that you can configure different load balancing algorithm or methods that can be configured here and the active adapter in this case right now is VM 
x0 if you had multiple adapters you can configure them as active and standby if you don't need some adapter you can certainly move that to the unused also depending on the change you can just simply go ahead and click ok here now we will go ahead and explore and we'll go ahead and create a new standard v switch and in that standard v switch we will go ahead and add create a new port group and later on on to that port group we will move some of our vm from this v switch 0 to the new v switch so to add a new v switch as you can see there's a plus icon here just go ahead and simply click on this one and you are being presented with a small wizard kind of a thing within this wizard there are a couple of options that says select the connection type do you want to add a vm kernel network adapter or do you want to add a physical network adapter or do you want to create a virtual machine port group for a standard switch so in this case we will go ahead and click virtual machine port group for a standard switch a port group handle the virtual machine traffic on standard so once that is done just simply go ahead and click next here now on this page there are two options being presented select an existing standard switch or new standard switch so we will simply go ahead and click on new standard switch because first we want to go ahead and create a new standard switch and on that new standard switch we will go ahead and create our first port group so go ahead and select new standard switch and simply click next on this page now we are being asked to assign an adapter to this new ESXR to new this new V switch so this adapter will be used for the external connectivity this is called our uplink so I can go ahead and select an active adapter and just simply go ahead and click on the green arrow and I would go ahead and select one of my adapter if you recall the adapter vnic 2 and 3 were not being used anywhere so I will go ahead and select a vnic 2 for this one and now what we just did we have assigned a physical network adapter or an uplink or for the outside connectivity for our this new v switch once everything looks good on this page just simply go ahead and click next and now we are being asked to assign a network label this network label is nothing but a meaningful or readable name for this v switch so let's go ahead and call uh, this v switch assign the switch a name of maybe we can call it dev and this is our development net if there are any vlans for dev this development network if you want to uh, go ahead and assign any vlan you can go ahead and certainly do that in this case i will not be using any vlan so just simply go ahead and click next on this page and now you uh, there is a review that kind of indicates okay hey we are creating a new v switch v switch one where the label virtual machine port group is by name uh dev network and the assigned adapter or the physical uplink is vm nic2 and there is no vlan has been configured once everything looks good if you need to make a change you can always go back we will go ahead and simply click on finish on this page and as you can see there was a new v switch was added if you go ahead and click on this new v switch this is also a standard switch and the switch is called dev network and as on the you can see this gray box again indicate this is a v switch one and within the v switch one there is one port group by the name of dev network and on the right hand side we have the physical adapter that we have assigned for the outside connectivity so our vm if they need to go reach any vms outside of these vms they can go ahead and make use of this physical network and again if you need to make any change in terms of the mtu or security setting we can always go ahead and edit and make uh, some of those change here in terms of traffic shipping teaming and failover now we have just created a new v switch and we created a one port group within that switch now let's go ahead and assign some of the vms to this newly created v switch or the port group so for that let's go back to the home uh, we can go to the vms and templates and in the previous labs we had created a dev vms folder so within the dev vms folder we have a couple of vms so let's go ahead and assign these vms to the newly created uh, port group so just simply go ahead and right click on one of your vm and go ahead and do the edit setting within the edit setting page uh, we'll have the network adapter so if you go ahead and expand the network adapter you can see some of the details for the network adapter now click on the drop down and you would see the our newly created port group if you don't see if you have many you can always click on show more network and within that you can also go ahead and select the port group that you want this vm to be assigned in this case we want this vm to be assigned to the dev network so simply go ahead and click select dev network go ahead and click ok here and save the changes by simply clicking ok and you can see in the recent task that was done now go ahead and repeat the same process for our another vm we'll go ahead and edit setting we will go ahead and click on the network adapter we'll go ahead and select our dev network as the port group for this vm once the changes are done just simply go ahead and click ok and if we go back to the home and go ahead and click on host and cluster now in the 43 if i go back again under configure networking and virtual switches now let's go ahead and click on v switch one now on the v switch one as you can see it shows there are two virtual machine if you go ahead and expand you can take a look okay hey there are two virtual machine that are being assigned to this particular port group uh, the virtual machines name are vm3 and vm4 here if you need to make any change or anything you can always click on this edit icon you can go ahead and uh, change the label if you desire so with that there are a couple of options here if you need to you can go ahead and refresh here if you need to manage your physical network adapters you can go ahead and 
do that. If you need to migrate, uh, certainly we can go ahead and make use of this one. So let's just simply go ahead and uh, do an edit on this page. Within this edit, again, uh, there are uh, same security settings uh, that you can go over. So right now in this vSwitch, there is only one port group by name Dev Network. Let's say if you want to create more port groups, so the procedure is pretty similar. Uh, just go ahead and select your vSwitch. I can go ahead and click on the plus icon, which says add host networking. Within the add host networking, go ahead and again, select virtual machine port group for a standard switch. Just go through the same wizard, but instead of adding a new vSwitch, this time we'll go ahead and select one of our existing vSwitch. So in this case, the vSwitch is vSwitch 1. Now simply go ahead and click on next here. Go ahead and specify a network label uh, that you want to create. Let's call it our lab VMs. Hey, if there is any VLAN, you go ahead and do that. If not, just simply go ahead and click next and you can always finish. It'll be a couple seconds and as you can see, our second port group shows up and right now there are no VMs. The procedure is same uh, if you need to go ahead and assign or the VMs to this particular port group, you can go ahead and edit those settings. Uh, let's say if you don't need this port group for any reason, uh, we can always click on the port group. Once you have selected the port group, you will see the standard switch, we switch, and right now we have selected lab VMs. There's an edit icon if you need to edit any setting. With that edit icon, there is a delete button. It says remove selected port group. If you want to remove this port group, just simply go ahead and click here and that would eventually remove your port group. So hopefully uh, you got the idea how you really create a new vSwitch, how you can assign a physical adapters, how you can move the VM from one vSwitch to the another vSwitch, how do you create a or add a new port group, how you delete the existing port group. So that'll be all for this episode or for this lab. I will see you in the next lab. Thank you.